In music, we talk so much about beat making that the term has come to mean the entire process of producing an instrumental backing track, with bass lines, chords, and maybe even vocal hooks or chop samples. But at the core of beat making is still the beat, the drums. Programming drum beats is often square one in making a beat, and if you're just getting started, it can even be a daunting challenge. And then there's you seasoned veterans. You face a different dilemma. Standard routines, common drum patterns you use all the time, and a general desire to try new things and explore new ways of making drums. So wherever you are in your musical journey, I want to show you beat map today because however you use it, it's about to up your beat making game. Check out this beat I've got going here. You'll notice lots of MIDI programming in the sequencer, but there's one track that's not programmed at all, the drums. That's because my drums are coming from Beatmap. So what is Beatmap? Well, it's officially called an algorithmic drummer, but what that means is that Beatmap is a player device in the Reason Rack, which will generate its own rhythmic patterns based on algorithms, which is just a fancy way of saying a set of rules and computer calculations designed to get good results. It's not a random note generator, it's following its own algo rhythm. Eh? Okay, the best way to really understand Beatmap is to see it in action. So let's do just that. Beatmap is a player device. That means it lives atop an instrument in Reason's rack. So let's bring a Kong drum machine into the rack and load one of the Kong presets that comes with Beatmap. Now, let's drag a Beatmap player on top of Kong and press run. Right away, you can see and hear that we've got a beat going just from Beatmap's default preset. If we load a different Kong preset, you'll hear that our rhythms are still coming from Beatmap, but even the simple act of loading a different kit alters our beat's feel. But let's dive into Beatmap itself to see what's going on and how we can start exploring ourselves. Beatmap is what is generating our rhythmic pattern. Actually, four rhythmic patterns, to be precise. There are four channels on Beatmap's front panel for kick drums, snare drums, hi-hats, and percussion sounds. In other words, the standard ingredients for most drum beats. Each channel is generating its own independent pattern and sending that pattern to our drum machine below. We can control how busy or sparse that rhythm is by using the density knob. If I temporarily solo the snare pad on my Kong and turn the density knob all the way down on beat map, we have no pattern. Turn it up a bit, and we have a basic pattern. If we now increase the snare drum's density in our full beat, you'll hear that it gets more busy, and we end up with a nice type of snare variation or drum fill. We can move that density knob around to our own taste, and suddenly, with one knob and with a little exploration, our drum pattern has taken on a personality all its own. Now adjusting the density of a drum pattern is all well and good, but where are these patterns coming from? Most of our musical exploration happens, like any great exploration, with a map. Literally, a beat map in this case. You can see it there, at the heart of the beat map interface. Laid out across that map are various rhythms with differing densities and drum patterns that you can hear by exploring different parts of the map. If we move the crosshairs, like maybe this area looks visually interesting. you'll hear our beat has entirely changed. And this isn't just dialing in the density of one drum. This would be the equivalent of asking a drummer in real life, Could you uh, maybe try a different feel on this song? But what if we liked the kick drum pattern in this part of the map, yet wanted to keep exploring other drum patterns for our snare or hi-hats? We can simply lock our kick channel's position to drop a pin in the map, the same way we do in Google Maps. And now, when we move around the map, our kick stays put while we explore other drum options. Our map exploration can also work in tandem with our density knobs. I like the feel in this part of the map, but I want the percussion sound and the snare to be less busy. So I'll simply dial those back. And just like before, once I've got something I like there, I can lock those two down and go back out into the map to see what else I can do with the hi-hats. 
and I can dial up their density. So by exploring the map, adjusting my density to taste, and locking drum channels to different points in the map, I've created my own drum pattern in a whole new way of working by simply letting my own sense of taste be my guide through the beat map. There are plenty of presets that come with beat map. And not only with beatmap settings dialed in already, but presets for the drum instruments included with Reason 11 Standard and Suite. You can try different combinations of, for example, an Oomph Club Drums preset with a beatmap preset on top. The results become quick start drums that get you going fast. One thing you'll notice right away about this beatmap preset is that the map is different from what we've seen before. Beatmap actually comes with four different maps, ranging in styles and feels. We can select a different map and the underlying patterns for our drums will change. We could go out exploring again and adjust our drums with the different options out there on our new map. Another thing that's on display here in this beatmap preset is the mirror section. Remember when I said the beatmap had four channels which controlled the rhythmic pattern of four drums? Well, I left one part out. You can actually control up to eight drum patterns, and you do that using the mirror setting on each of the four beatmap patterns. Mirror, however, doesn't function independently. It works in tandem with the drum controls directly above it, triggering in between every pair of those notes. Let's look at a really simple example here. With all other density settings at zero, we can hear just a simple snare backbeat. This is happening here, where our snare's density is right in the middle and set to trigger a note at C-sharp 1, which is the snare pad on our Kong drum machine. If we dial up the mirror knob, which is set to a note of F1, you'll see the side stick sample start triggering on our Kong. It triggers after each pair of snare hits, like this. One, two, mirror, one, two, mirror, one, two, mirror, as we dial up the density of our snare, its rhythm grows more complex, and therefore the pairs of notes and the mirrored notes grow more complex too. Like this. Now going back to our previous beat, you can notice that our snare and percussion channels have their mirror settings dialed up and assigned to different drums on oomph. The result is a very lively beat that's playing more than the four drums beatmap might first appear to be playing. Like so much of beatmap, the mirror settings are tools that you can use to experiment yourself and see what happens. There lies creativity in the uncertainty of knowing what might happen or where you might go on the map, and that's part of the journey itself. And when you're ready to get more advanced, Beatmap has some more controls to adjust how the patterns are generated, the shuffle, or a whole other world of control voltage connections on the back to send gate triggers out from Beatmap, or to send in signals to modulate pattern densities from external sources like LFOs. Beatmap is just like any great map. It can be used to help you find your way quickly, or it can be used to help lead you into the unknown. Once you start exploring Beatmap yourself, I'm sure you'll appreciate that the saying is certainly true. The journey is the goal. And Beatmap is all about the journey of beat making. <laughs>